Before starting this video, I want to let you guys know that Coding Cleverly also has a Patreon page. So go to patreon.com slash coding cleverly and you'll see that there is a Patreon page that is available and you guys could support the channel by just joining any one of these tiers. You guys also could become my patrons. That would also motivate me to provide better and better content. So all you gotta do is go to this page and show some love to Coding Cleverly. Enough with the shameless plug. Now let's go to the video. Today we're gonna be searching arrays and there are two different types of searching. One is called linear search and the other is called binary search. I've covered a video about this very early in my channel and it was all in C++. But in this video, we're gonna be doing this stuff in Java and to be honest, it's not that different. The concepts are totally same and everything is completely the same. The only thing that is different is just the syntax. So what is the linear search? Now suppose we have this awesome looking array over here and it has eight elements. So I want to find some specific elements. Suppose I want to find the element one. Now what I have to do is I have to iterate the array from the start to the end to get the element. That's how the linear search works. A linear search is a search technique which systematically determines if a given value is in an entry of a given list by going through each element of the list one at a time until it locates the desired value. Although linear search has an O of n time complexity, its performance depends on the input. We have the best case and the worst case. And we also have the average case. Now, if we look at the best case, the algorithm only needs to make one comparison in order to locate the target value. Suppose the target value is in the beginning, so just like the first one. So we're looking for two and we got two from the first index. So this is the best case. The worst case, on the other hand, is when the algorithm needs n comparisons to locate the target value, which is either not there in the list at all, or it's in the last place of a list. If we want the value, let's say seven, we're gonna have to iterate all of these elements and just gonna waste our time until we reach the final destination here and then we get the value. Or in the other case, you don't even have the element at all. Suppose I wanted 11, I had to go through the whole list. At the end, I came to a conclusion that it didn't even exist in the list at all. So that's also the worst case. So the average case is that the algorithm performs n divided by two comparisons. The code for this example is pretty simple. All you got to do is just create an array, put the values inside and just iterate it through using a for loop or a while loop and just determine if you get the value in it or not. So it's pretty simple and I hope you guys could do this by yourself. If you know how to solve this problem, then paste your code in the comment sections. Linear search is a good choice for a search algorithm when you expect the target value to be positioned near the beginning of the list. So like we said, if it's over here, two, five or three, it's, uh, it's pretty good, it's pretty good. But when it comes at the end, it's not a good choice at all. A search needs to be performed on an unsorted list because linear search traverses the entire list from beginning to end regardless of the order so all right so now let's look at the other kind of searching the other kind is binary search now we're going to write the code for the binary search first and then after that we're going to discuss what it is and how it works Suppose we want to look for the number 15 and for this number we're gonna to have to first uh, get the mid index of this array so that's what our logic says to us so we could say the zeroth index which is plus the last um, so this is where the left is the right is going to be pointing at the size 
So we know that this, um, the logic here says that right is the array dot length. So since this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to 7, we could say that it is 8 in size because, yeah, 0 to 7 is 8 in size. We divide that with 2. So now this will give us 4. So we'll get 4. 4 is the index that we could uh, talk about. So this is the fourth index. So this is what we're going to consider. And we can see that the number is 15. So, oh, awesome. The perfect, we just looked at it and we just compare that index. So we say, um, we actually get the array mid value and we put it in there. And then if it was, uh, we just return the mid index. And there you go. We returned it. We got it perfectly correct. So now suppose we wanted something else like, for instance, 20. So we want the number 20 here. Okay, zero plus eight, which is the length of the array, divided with two, which gives us fourth, uh, four, fourth index, or I would say that. So this is the fourth index, that's our mid index. And we look at the value for this, this is 15, it's um, actually less than 20. So this condition would apply. If the mid value is less than the target value, we actually make our left pointer point to the mid plus one. So since it was pointing over here before, now it's gonna be pointing mid plus one. So mid is this one, we say over here. Now left will be pointing here. I'm just gonna use an L over here, lowercase L, and just point it till here. We could just say the right is the size for now. So we just say the size is actually eight. Left is equal to mid plus one, and if it wasn't, then the right is equal to mid, but in now the whole condition will run again. So left is less than right. It's gonna um, divide the thing again by two. So for instance, we have from here five, and then we have the size. So we have the index five over here, five, and the right one is eight. So we just say five plus eight. We divide this by two. So for instance, we got 13 divided by two and we get an answer of 6.5. 6.5, but the floor division will be six. Now we go to the sixth index because that's the mid now. So here's our mid. And we look at the value, which is 23. Well, 23 is actually greater than what we required. We're actually looking for 20. This is our uh, value that we need. And 23 is bigger. So the condition will be applied till here. Right is equal to mid. So now we, from the eight index, our right will now point to the sixth index, which is over here, which was currently the mid. So now we just have left and right. Since we're looking for 20, we have left pointed to this and right pointed to this. So all we're gonna do now is we're gonna say five plus six divided by two, which is 11 divided by two, and the division would be given as five. So when we look at this, we get the fi fifth index, and we verify if the fifth index is our exact value, it is, and there you go. This is how binary search worked. So all we gotta do is, we just explained all of that code here, pretty straightforward. If the value didn't exist, I just returned a minus one. This is the searchable array over here, and we passed in. All we gotta do now is call it. So system dot out dot print ln, and then we have the searchable uh, the search method, the search method, the name of the array searchable, and the target value. So we just pass these things in, and the main method. Oh, okay, so the main method is closing here. I'm gonna have to write this code here after this. So right there, right here. So now that we're done with this, we can easily save this code and start running it. Java C, binary search, dot Java. And then we simply write Java binary search, which is the class file. And you can see that it results in six. And the number that we were looking for was 41. And it's saying that it's in the sixth index. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. So how efficient is the binary search algorithm? 
In each iteration, we are cutting the list in half. The time complexity will be O of log of N, which is right here. And if I give an example of a sorted list of 64 elements, so let's say the elements are 64, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add that 64 number in the nth place. So we say O, and then we put brackets here. We say log, and by default it's log base two. So we know by default it's log base two, and we put the 64 element here. And if we calculate this, we get a total number of six comparisons. So this is the maximum number of comparisons that a 64 element sorted array will take using binary search. So a sorted data set significantly speeds up searches. We would use a linear search that would takes O of N time if we had no idea of the ordering.